Hey, I'm John Buck, and I'm going to talk to you briefly in this video about the fundamentals of discrete time signals, uh, specifically uh, how we represent them mathematically, what kind of mathematical notation we'll use for discrete time signals, and then also uh, how we graph them. We'll have a, a particular form of graphing them. Uh, so I'll show you that, just in those two things in this short video, uh, and then go on with other videos from there. So let me get my uh, camera out of the way and my whiteboard up. So again, tonight's video, uh, this is for ECE 320 at UMass Dartmouth. Uh, the video topic is discrete time signal fundamentals. If we go to our next page, the uh, basic idea, we're going to represent uh, something, a discrete time signal. going to be a, a particular kind of function, right? Normally it's, it's a sequence, but we're going to write it as a function like x of n, and generally with square brackets, where the idea of the, the square bracket means this is to remind us <clears throat> that the argument or the independent function, independent variable, is discrete integers. Okay, so what that means is that I can have an equal minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, but not any time in between. That n is only defined for the discrete time values, uh, the discrete time values of the index n and not anything in between. So the kind of the idea of using these square brackets is the square bracket should remind us by writing it x of n like this. It's reminding us that this is like an array. Like in computer memory, many of you by now have seen a computer architecture class or something like that, and you know that if I, I can go to a, a look up in an array in my computer memory and say, well, what's the value at location 27? Or I might say, go tell me what's the value at location 35. But if I go ask my, my CPU, my, my computer, and say, what's the value in memory location four and a half? that creates an error, right? It's not defined in between. So that's an important point to get down early, is that this is an unhappy expression. You can't do this. Discrete time signals are not defined or non-integer values of n. So it's not just that there's zero, but they're actually not defined. And so that's how we, we sort of write basic signals like that, well, x of n or y of n maybe for a system output. Uh, and when we go to sketch the signals, we're going to have a particular way of sketching them or, or graphing them to remind us that they're discrete and not defined in between. So we have just graphing discrete time signals. If I draw a signal like this, draw my sample signal here, I have this as my time axis n, and then I should be good and label my x of n here. And so I'm going to assume the signal is 0 uh, at minus 2 and even earlier. At, uh, at minus 1, I'll say it's height 1. So I draw this little stem going up height 1 here. It doesn't have to be on graph paper. You can do it on, on normal paper, too. Uh, this one, oh, not to scale. Undo that. So, and then I'll say I'm going to make my signal at time 0. I'll have height 2 at time 1. Oh, I want to get that out of the way. At height 1, maybe I'll make it at time 1. It'll be height negative 1. At time 2, maybe it's height negative 2. At time uh, 3, oh, that was bad. Time 3, it's going to be 1 again. And then maybe at time 4, it'll go back to 0. Get it right on the line here. But I drew this one off by off my scale, too. So make it my uh, trusty eraser that we will see off in this semester and clean that up. 
So there, that's height minus two. So in each case, I've got labeled the times here and then I label the amplitudes as much as needed. And so just if I, if I saw a figure like this and I, I asked you, well, what's the value of the signal? What's x at time two? I'm gonna pause the video for a second, come up with your answer, and when you think you have it, come back. Okay, so if I want to find the value of x at time 2, I would go up here at time 2 and look down and say it's equal to minus 2. Similarly, I could say, well, at x at time 0. Again, if you want to pause the video, test yourself for a second. But its amplitude is 2. What about, we say, well, what's the value of the signal at 1 and a half? Well, I could come up here and say, well, halfway between 1 and 2, I've just got this line. It's going to be 0. But again, don't be fooled. Keep your eye on the ball and say, nope, that's an unhappy expression. That's undefined. That the signal is undefined when the argument is not an integer. So that, that idea of things being discrete is fundamental. It will come up again and again this term. Uh, and we'll see that's the heart of everything that's sort of different about discrete time is the fact that we have this discrete integer valued argument. I'm going to mention, just to finish up, mention a, a few examples of signals. So examples of discrete time signals. And we're going to write discrete time often abbreviated like this as dt. So one, everybody's favorite, digital audio, right? If I have a song or music on my phone or an MP3 player, it's discrete time audio. It's, it's basically digital audio or discrete time audio. So this is an, an interesting example because this is a, a sound. The pressure waves that make the music are originally continuous in the air, but then we sample them to make them discrete in time. So we're still able to capture all the information by just grabbing at specific instances, particularly 44,100 instances per second. And we'll talk about that later in, in the class. We'll see how that works. Uh, but it doesn't have to be music. Another example could be, we, we could talk about the Dow Jones average. And was it Dow Jones Industrial Average is its formal name. On Friday when it closes. So it has like the weekly closing value of the Dow Jones value, which is an average of a bunch of stocks. It's fundamentally discrete if we say I'm only measuring it every Friday afternoon when the stock market closes. I'd have one measurement per week. So n, my x of n here, in this case, this would be the week number. Right, so I'd get one measurement per week. Another uh, delicious signal for the, that's very important to the city I live in, which is New Bedford, Massachusetts, is the uh, scallops landed every day, each day. You can go look. Uh, in the newspaper or look on a website for the fit seafood auction and say how many scallops or, or how many pounds of scallops are brought ashore each day. So I could then have, this, you know, in that case, X of N would be the number of scallops and each N here would be a different day. I'll mention one last example to finish up, which is digital images, right? We all love selfies. So a digital photo is another kind of Thing, right? Each pixel is discrete. So if I were going to do that, I might actually have to write it. My function x would have two arguments, say n and m, where if I'm going to uh, annotate those, uh, you know, the n might be the row of the image. So I'm going to say if I how many rows down do I go in the pixels? And M might be the column. So how many how many columns across am I going? 
It's also a different one though because now X uh, and an M are in space and it's two-dimensional. So this is kind of a complicated example. We won't, we'll mention it as an example, but we won't really do a lot with digital images in this class. Okay, so we're going to pause here and for the first activity for class, I want you to go come up with uh, three examples of your own. Let me uh, get back to my, my video here. We can finish up with... All right, so we're back on camera here. So I want you to finish up with finding three examples of your own, uh, finding signals beside, they're different from the four I have there. List each one, and also for each one, say whether this is something that's fundamentally discrete, like how many scallops per day, or is it something that was originally continuous, but you sampled to make it discrete, like the digital audio example, or like the selfie. All right, thanks, and uh, I'll be along shortly uh, with the next video where we talk about how we uh, manipulate signals, how we do things like add them, scale them, uh, shift them, all very important fundamental operations we'll be doing all semester. Okay, we'll see you later.